What's up guys and welcome back to the TK Take video and I've got another note taking app for you guys. So we're coming up to September, so you know, new school year, new uni year. A lot of students will be looking for a new note taking app or a note taking app for them to use while at uni. They might be given a new iPad, a new tablet of some kind and they want to figure out what is the best note taking app for them to use. Now often you got to commit to an application otherwise you'll have a pain of switching files from one app to another. So you, that decision has to be made right the first time round. And there's disadvantages and advantages to a lot of different note taking apps. So the one I've got for you today is Notewise. This has been very popular on the Android side of things, but now they've moved over to iOS. And so now it opens up this application to a lot of new users who have iPads. Okay, so looking at the application, very easy, very clean to use. You've got these two buttons here. I'm gonna show you the top one first. This is a plus icon and it lets you add different kinds of text. Um, that's really key for you guys to understand that you can, it's not just about writing on a free text, you can import a PDF, so you can annotate it on your lecture slides, for example, um, or, or you can import like an image, so you can annotate on top of particular images as well. It also has a scan function, a built-in scan, so if you do have a document that you want to scan and then write over or just save, save in this application, you can do that too, and we'll touch upon that on these features later. Um, for now, let's just click on new note and I'll open a blank canvas for us to use. It defaults as blank, but if we go to change template, we can choose a bunch of different templates for us. So uh, personally, I want it as a rule, but it's even got like mathematical kind of grids uh, and it's got a uh, music sheet too. And it's also got the ability to change uh, colors. So I can have a little bit of a tint to my page and I can choose to apply it. And this is the great thing. I can choose to apply it to my current page or to all pages. So if you just want one of your pages to be a music page, you can choose that as well. In this case, I want it to be on all of them. Now, what the first thing we're going to do is look at the features at the top here. So the first one is pen. That's quite an obvious place to start. Um, you've got three different pens, fountain, ballpoint, and brush. The one thing it is missing, I would say, is like a pencil. Not all note-taking applications have that, but some do, and it's, it's, it could be an additional useful feature to have. But the ones that it does have is, is plenty enough. Now, it does use the, you know, the, the technology in the Apple Pencil. So what I'm talking about mainly is the pressure sensitivity. So the great thing about that, if I press really lightly on a piece of paper, it comes out light. But then if I press hard, it comes out hard. And that, means that when you are writing you do have that natural kind of look another feature that it has is the stabilization stabilization kind of smoothens out your unwanted vibrations when you type when you're writing or drawing you know there'll be small little vibrations into into what you do so for example with the stabilization completely off try and draw a curve and as you can see, despite you trying to be careful with it, there are little imperfections in it. It's not a perfect curve. Now, what the stabilization does, if I say increase it, it removes those vibrations so that when I try to draw the curve again, it's drastically smoother. It doesn't change your handwriting. It doesn't change the way it looks, but it just neatens it up. And it's actually quite a useful feature. Obviously, you've got all these colors here at the bottom and uh, an infinite amount should those options not be enough. Another feature that this does, which I really like, is the uh, shapes. As you can see, you're going to hold to draw shapes. Now, a lot of applications do this, but however, this has a little bit of extra attention to detail that just makes it more enjoyable to you. So what I mean by that is, for example, if I draw a circle and I hold it, um, I draw the circle and I can make it bigger, smaller. If I draw a triangle, for example, and I hold it. Uh, in this case, it's probably a bit more relevant. You can see that there's like an, an angle gauge. This means that if you're trying to draw exact geometric uh, shapes, whether it's for drawing or for maths or for whatever, it's very, it can be very useful to have that angle gauge uh, in place. Now there are so many different shapes you can do. You can even draw arrows uh, like that. Um, but like I said, you can you can have a star and even like hexagon pentagons as well. Um, because those I'm particularly bad at drawing. Um, the, the cool thing about it, again, using the lasso tool, um, is that if I, if I do select an image, I can actually edit it. So as well as obviously changing the shape of it and everything like that, I can increase the number of sides it has. Four points, five points, six points, and increase or decrease the number of points I have. Same thing with this image. I can select it and I can increase how many sides I want the shape to have. So if you then want to change it to a hexagon, pentagon, octagon, decagon, you can do. Now with the ship specific shapes tab, uh, you can go into way more detail uh, than previously. So you can actually have like a shape where you can choose a border and a fill, really customize what you want. And actually you've got geometric uh, or mathematical functions here. So let's draw a graph. So I'm gonna go to the next page. There's also another feature I like just as a side note. To go to the next page, you just slide up 
and it'll add a page. Quite an easy to use feature so that you don't have to go into like a menu setting to add it. Um, okay, so yeah, so let's draw this grid and I can add a sign function, uh, change the color and draw a sign graph. And again, uh, I can edit it as well. Not, on not only by the size of it, also I can decrease and increase and decrease the number of curves. Definitely if you are a student who's using these mathematical functions, it'll save you so much time than drawing it out on a piece of pen and paper. So it's got the standard one, sine, cosine, and you can even change the, the, the line type. So it doesn't have to be a straight line, it can be dotted. And that goes the same for the pen feature as well. So I think I might've missed that, that the line type doesn't have to be uh, a straight line. Um, I can have I can have a dotted line. So now you've done all these notes and you're bound to make an error. So what are you gonna do? You wanna erase it. Now, I've seen some quite creative ways of erasing in note-taking apps. Um, you'd be surprised. Um, in here, the main ways to erase, you've got these three uh, thicknesses that you can erase from. Now, some applications I have seen where if you press harder, the size of the um, the radius becomes smaller or larger, or the faster you, you scribble, the faster you erase, the larger the eraser area as well. This one doesn't have that. It's got these three set size, but that's absolutely fine because it's got a bunch of additional features to help be very specific in, in what you want to do. You can choose to either erase part of an object, so like this, but if you make things easier, you can choose to erase entire objects. And to be more specific, you can actually choose what you wanted to erase. So I've set it to pen, highlight and shapes, but if you had a, a, an image that you've inputted, it doesn't erase that by default. Let's add this image of a pizza and you want to write over it, circle things, and then you want to erase it, what you don't want, uh, also you can switch the eraser with the Apple Pencil as well. Um, so if you wanted to erase it, it will just erase the text. But if you also wanted to erase the shape, um, you can do that as well. Additionally, to make things super easy, they've also got a feature called scribble to erase. Let's say I had a piece of text. I can just scroll that out and it'll get rid of it. Now, one of my favorite features is the lasso tool because um, it's super powerful in this application. There are so many things you can do. Now to demonstrate this, I'm going to add like a PDF. Even though this is starting off, started off as a written text, I can actually still import a PDF and have it carry on as a PDF. So now I've got a PDF starting right at the bottom. The great thing about this is that you can have your lecture slides, your homework up, and you can draw on it. You can use shapes to circle things. You can highlight specific texts. But for example, there may be situations where you want to readjust what you've written. A lasso to, to readjust, change the shape of things. And I can lasso entire areas so that everything moves at one go. You can even uh, lasso to save things to a, something called a library. So let's say for example, there's something that I draw or write repeatedly and I want to save it to the library. So this tree is something that I want to repeatedly paste. So what I can do is I can select it, click on this and add it to the library. And the library is up here in the top and you can see that it's added there. So now that when I drag that, I can add as many of these as I want. Obviously, it's also good for quickly erasing everything in one go. So I can select all of that and just bin it all. But there may be situations where you don't want to erase some a particular image. Let's say I input this image of this fan. Now let's say I definitely, definitely don't want to erase this. So I can lock it. Now what that means is that when it comes to selecting, even though I'm selecting everything, if I want to move it, it won't move that image because I've locked it. Also, if I want to delete it, it won't delete that image because I've locked it. Another cool feature that it has is the ability to uh, crop. Now cropping seems quite straightforward, um, but let's say I just want this fan cropped out. I could try to do something like this, um, but that doesn't do a very good job at removing the background. I might, you know, want to try and then freeform the crop, you know, just use my pencil to do that you know and that that gives you a better result but it's still not very neat now what this has that again don't see on any other application is a ai kind of cropper so what you can do is it will detect the main object of that and remove the background for you sometimes however uh, you might have a really nice note that you've done let's see here and i want to then save that as a as a screenshot so you might go onto your to your iPad and think, okay, well, let me screenshot this. But now you've got all of the things at the top, you've got the background uh, lines in there. So it, it, it's not ideal. What you can do is you can use the lasso tool to also screenshot. 
Uh, so I can take a screenshot and the key feature here, you know, it's not what I've said at the moment isn't isn't that uh, groundbreaking, but the key feature here is that I can choose whether I want to include or exclude the background. So now let's say your, your, your background is a lined piece of paper, but actually you want to screenshot it without lined paper in the background. I can do that. So now I've removed the background. It saved it without the background. As you can see here, this is the screenshot that I did. Probably one last feature that I want to mention in this main page is this record function here. So um, let's say you're taking this to your lecture and you've got all of your, your, your slides up here, um, but you want to record that lecture at the same time. You can click record uh, and it will start recording the, the background noise. So uh, then when you replay it and you go over these slides again, you can hear what the lecturer was saying. Uh, and I can pause that, go to the next slide and then start a new one. All right, so great features. I think this is honestly, everything you need. Uh, the features is not the only thing that's important. You need to have the ability to organize as well. The first thing, for example, is that you can look at all your pages and you can easily reorder them. You can bookmark them and see what's in your bookmarks and you can outline them as well. What the outline feature helps you do is um, basically set it as a subheading. For example, I can uh, add this to an outline and call it uh, artery and I can add this to an outline and call it endothelial cell. And what that means is when I go to outlines, I've got these listed here so that I can quickly go into them. Another really, really important feature of a note-taking application is the ability to have a file system. Here, you can put a folder within a folder within a folder, uh, which is really important for organization. So for example, here, you have a folder called heart. Within the heart, I've got the biology. And in the biology, I've got my note. Now the folder you can uh, edit you can customize with different colors and everything like that and rename it and the good thing about it is also you have tags so um, let's say i've got another another biology lecture but this one's about the brain and it's in a different it's in a different module for the brain let's say um, so what i could do is create a folder called brain and then i could put that in that folder there now i've got these two folders both of them contain about the biology of different uh, different anatomy so what i could do is i could actually create a tag so I could create a blue as a tag for biology and I can tag that lecture and I can tag this one too. So now let's say I've got you know, loads of different um, topics, subjects that I've studied, but within all of them, I've co covered a common topic like uh, biology. I can go into that tag and now I can see all the biologies of, of all the different subjects that I've done. So it's a good way of grouping and organizing it. All right, and finally, I've got a couple of last final little tips or features that I want to mention. Notewise, all of the support split screen. So this is especially good if you've got a really large tablet like the, the Plus models. You can actually open it in a new window and that split screens it. So you can have potentially two notes going on at the same time. And because they're the same application, you can copy it and then paste it between notes. That's one thing. The second thing, again, I just want to show you guys is that I mentioned that you can access Notewise on uh, the web. So let's show you that. By the way, if you've not seen my review video of this laptop, then you're missing out because it's amazing. So what I'm gonna do is, to make it easy for the camera, is gonna move that tab to the bottom screen. And as you can see, this is not an application, it's a web page, and it has all the notes that I um, just made. That's really good if you are, like if in the library and you wanna access your notes, then you can use that as a way to access your notes. Now that is with the upgraded version, so with the cloud features. So it's free to download, it's free to use. Um, you can use it like normal, but you're limited to using it on your iPad. You can upgrade, and have it as a cloud format. The cloud format is particularly useful because that means you can access it from other devices uh, and you can access it from uh, a web browser. So let's say you're not on a, your personal device, you're on a public computer in a library, you can still access all of your notes. You don't really see that often on note taking apps, so it's great to see that here. But you can just pay a one-on-one -on -one time unlimited access um, and then you can get nearly all of the features, but you're, you're missing out on some features. So for example, uh, real-time collaboration, um, you can't share notes with other people and you can't view a note in the browser. So uh, depending on, on your needs, you can kind of choose what plan you need. But if you really wanted to, you can of course use the free version as well. And that keeps everything local. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. That's a deep dive into this application. I hope it's given you a good idea uh, on whether this is the kind of the, the app that would be suitable for you. Like I said, has pretty much all the features I'd be looking for as a student, as a professional. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you on the next TKT video.